Hi everyone, welcome to this session. Uh, sorry to be a little late. And uh, this is build a micro HT server for embedded system. And this is online. I'm John Pan. I come from Taiwan. Yeah. Taiwan is also well known as foremost. The mainland area is about 36,000 kilometers square. And one of my dreams is having an electric vehicle and uh, drive it around and uh, take beautiful pictures in Taiwan. And uh, so I want to build the, uh, an experience uh, pra pra platform for starting a, a vehicle controlling. And uh, I want the uh, vehicle controlling is in the uh, uh, cross loop this uh, cross loop model. Yeah. And in the most controlling uh, in the most controlling systems actually it's a motor. And uh, the motor always comes with the controller and uh, it also gets the rotation status of the motor. And uh, the controller can do the uh, uh, controlling algorithm with the feedback and the uh, uh, controlling command. And uh, there's a lot of parameters that will uh, change, the, uh, change the motor status. For example, the temperature, humidity, and etc. And we can use all, uh, the encoder to measure the status of a rotation and uh, something else for uh, like the sensorless method to uh, get the rotation status too. After gathering all of the data, we can do a system identification for the uh, undefined system. For example, if the motor, we don't have the data sheet of the motor. So in traditional, uh, gathering the data, we use the uh, wireless serial port. And it may be uh, slow. And uh, if we have too many devices have to communicate with, and uh, we only have one cent central computer, then it will be a problem. And uh, so I think if there is another choice, for example, we can use the TCP IP based internet and uh, it could be faster and uh, convenient for man management. The protocol for over TCP IP, it could be MQTT coed or just a RESTful web API on HTTP. Uh, it, 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 there is no best cho choice for any condition, but always a choice for uh, case by case. And uh, in traditional, there is a heterogeneous gateway for internet and uh, uh, traditional communicate protocol. For example, RS232 and Bluetooth DB, or even smart, uh, s s uh, smart internet, like uh, it's a smart internet, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Or just, we can make the device connect to the internet directly. And for my condition, I want my device can connect to the internet directly. So I, put, I want to put an HTTP server on the device, and uh, I can use the browser to send the command to the controller through the HTTP server. And gathering all, all of the major data from the ADC and, and, the, and from the HTTP server, and uh, I can use the browser to browse the data. And uh, the full stack and IoT is fancy for now. However, there's a lot of the limitation. Considering the size and the power restric restriction, most embedded devices have, uh, have limited resources. I mean, it's on the microcontroller unit level, not the uh, big model. For example, uh, Cortex-A or uh, Intel X86 CPU. I mean, it's on the microcontroller unit level. And uh, it has less processors, and less memory, and uh, less storage, and uh, even lower speed. So um, we may not put a heavy OS on the, on the chip. And uh, so they may not have the uh, process or thread APIs. So we cannot put the Apache or NGX HTTP server uh, on the pro platform directly. So I need to have a, a HTTP server to do, to do the things for that. And before new HTTP server, uh, we can review the OSI seven layers that we have run from the textbook. The physical layer that define the electrics and the lines, data link network and transport layers define how to link with the neighbors, how to route with the IP, and uh, the, how to uh, parse or uh, build the segment. They are all then controlled by the OS. And for a, a session presentation and the application layer are controlled by the application. For example, the HTTP server uh, may have a web API, a client requests the uh, designated URL, uh, and then it will uh, have an 
re, uh, encoded re response with the HTML form and uh, uh, response through the HTTP socket to the client. And the application and uh, uh, OS has an line, the yellow line here, the socket API is important. It split the application and the OS. And uh, later I will discuss, I will tell you why it is important. And the HTTP protocol, the standard IFC 2616, 1.1. HTTP uh, protocol is a, a request response pr protocol, a client send request server respond. And here's an example I sneer from my browser. It is an HTTP request. And here's for the response. It, it defines what is the HTTP message. It, uh, HTTP message consists of request and the response form. And uh, all, both, of them, both of them start with a star line and uh, multiple message headers, an empty line, and maybe a message body. It is not necessary, but it could be. And uh, HTTP message headers uh, consist with, uh, it could be a four types, journal header, request header, response header, or entity header. And uh, all, all of the ha uh, header consists with a field name, a column, and a field value. And that single space is preferred for, uh, between the column and the field value. And uh, the message body, actually, it is an ent entity body, and uh, we will discuss later. And uh, here is the request example again. The, the, it begins with the star line and also call a request line for HTTP request. And the multiple HTTP request message headers. An empty line and no message body here. Uh, it could be, but not for this sample. And the request line uh, begins with a method, method token and the request UI and the protocol version. And the request method could be the option get head post put delete trust connect and the extensions method any method you want. And the request UI is the uniform resource identifier and identify the resource. And the, uh, here's this sum of the specific request header examples. And the, here's the HTTP response uh, example. The star line also called states status line for uh, HTTP response message and uh, a, a response message headers, empathy line and a HTTP response message body. And it consists with the protocol version and uh, status code and uh, te uh, associated textual phrase. The status code could be uh, five series. The 100 series is for informational. And 200 is for success, 300 for the reduction, 400 is for client-side error, and 500 is for the server-side error. And uh, also, here's some uh, example for a, resp a specific response header. And the entity body consists of the entity headers fields and the entity body. And the entity header fields define the meta information of the uh, entity body, and the entity body is in the format and encoded defined by the entity header fields. For example, the, um, the entity headers may, uh, may have the content type, and then the content type may be the text slash HTML. Then the entity body must be in the HTML format. And here's a little re recap. The client sender requests the message and in, the, in this form, and the HTTP server responds the message in this form. Yeah, just <laughs> And here is the concurrency and backend problem, problem about the HTTP server. A client sent a re, uh, HTTP request to the HTTP server. And the HTTP server's socket get a request and rebuild the request message and pass it to the backend server application. The backend server application responds to the message and writes through the server socket to the client. However, uh, it's good it, uh, it, it's good for this situation. However, if there are multiple clients sent the HTTP request at the same time, then the HTTP server can only handle one of the HTTP requests at, at the same time. So it chooses one of the HTTP requests and it pass it to the backend server, server, server application and then write, write a response to the client. Which one should be, be processed first? 
uh, the yellow block is the IO bound, uh, which means the server reads a request from the socket and uh, writes a response to the socket, which means that CPU has to wait for the IO writing or reading. And so there's a concurrency problem. The server could use the process or a thread API for multiple clients. However, a socket works great in a bucket mode. It, could, it, it works great for, for this model. However, the process or thread API must be provided by the OS. And uh, so there's a lot of context switching. Maybe we can, we can use the IO multiplexing and number blocking socket. Uh, it could use in a single thread s situation and uh, uh, compare with the process and thread. It, it is less resource required and uh, no context switching for this model. And here is some of the IO multiplexing and the non blocking APIs, especially the Slack function we, are, we will use later. And here comes the backend server applications. The, uh, standard RFC 3857, the Common Gateway Interface 1.1. The Common Gateway Interface is a simple interface for running external program, software, or ga gateways under an information, uh, information server. And it's in an uh, independent manner. It defines the script. The script is invoked by the server according to this interface. It not to be a standalone program, but it could be a dynamic, loaded, or shared library, or even a subroutine. And the meta data uh, is a parameter which carries information from a server to the script. For example, Apache HTTP server receives a request and parses it. And the server puts the request header into the environment variables and then forks, forks to have a child process, and the child process will inherit parents' environment variables. So the child process can get the variables with the, uh, by the, uh, it can get the HTTP headers by the environment, environment variables and uh, get the uh, request body from the standard input. The Apache HTTP server also have the response which is produced and uh, written from the standard output of the child process. There's also another model, FastCGI. Instead of uh, creating a new process for each request, CGI uh, pro, pro, uh, creating e each new process for. Uh, instead of creating a new process for each request, Face CGI uses a persistent process to handle a series of requests. And uh, to service incoming requests, the web server sends environment information and the page requests itself to a Face CGI process with the socket or TCP connection. And uh, the connection may be closed at the end of the, pro uh, the response, but both of the web server and the fast CGI service proce uh, process persist. They live at the same time. And uh, here's another uh, model, the Netscape server application programming interface, NSAPI. Um, applications that use NSAPI are referred to as uh, NSAPI plugins. Each plugin implements over, uh, one or more several application functions. And the NS API plugins run inside the server process. And the CGI programs and the fast CGI programs run outside of the server process. And uh, for my convenience, I hope the micro HTT server could work on limited resource, especially from uh, embedded system. And uh, it could process multiple HTTP clients concurrently. And uh, it also, because it's HTTP server, so it, it, it should look like an HTTP server. And here's the project. You can find it on the GitHub. Uh, Starline is my ID, and uh, you can find the micro HTTP server project with the, this URL. And I split the backend. Uh, uh, Backend server application into two parts, the middleware and the server, server application functions, uh, just like the uh, NS API. And uh, the client send a request, and the server use the IO multiplexing model, the select function, choose one of the uh, HTTP requests, and then pass the, pass the request to the middleware. The middleware 
do like uh, NS API and dispatch the HTTP request to the corresponding server application functions. And uh, this is called the route. And uh, I will uh, discuss, discuss later. And uh, the server, server application functions will produce the HTTP response message and the write to the client. And here comes with the server socket, what, what does it do? And the server socket, just like a, a, a other server application, it has a listening socket on the descendant port. And uh, it uses the select model to select ready socket. If the ready socket is a server socket, then it accepts a new client socket. If it is not a server socket, then it must connect uh, communication with the client. So it, it check the state. Its state is ready to be read. If it is yes, then read the, so read the socket and build the HTTP request message and uh, pass it to the middleware and then uh, the server, server application functions will produce the response. And then check the socket is ready to be written and then write to the uh, client and then close. And the middleware uh, register routes before a server starts. And the route is corresponding to the request line, uh, which means the request method and the request URI. Different request method and the different uh, request URI corresponds to different route. And re uh, uh, we register the route before the server starts and then have and then uh, middleware get an HTTP request message. It will compare the request method and request UI with the registered route. If it is matched the route, then the middleware will dispatch the, dispatch the uh, HTTP request to the matched route. And then it's due to the server application function of the matched route. If it, it is not, it, uh, if it is not a matched route, then it will check there is any uh, matched you uh, static file with the uh, request the URI. If so, then read the file and uh, write it into the HTTP request message. If it is not, then the middleware will pass the HTTP request to the not found server application functions, and then it will produce the not found message. All of that ends with return to the middleware, and the middleware write to the uh, uh, pass the response message to the server socket, and server socket uh, write to the client. I, I have a prototype with the Pi version. It works great in Py, uh, Python 3.2 up. And, um, but I have to make sure the encoding during reading and writing socket because Python 3 is uh, Unicode for string. And uh, the main files uh, are server.py and the middleware.py in a library folder. And here is an example of the Pi version at micro HTTP server. First, we have to import the related library and then register the route, for example, the get method and the root URI. And then run the HTTP server with the uh, callback for a new request. And the callback for new requ request is the middleware. The middleware do the, uh, will check the route and the dispatch. And then this, this is one of the application for the server, server, server application functions, the welcome page. It will produce the HTML content. And here is example that I capture. And uh, I use the browser to request uh, my, HTTP, my, my HTTP server, and then it responds to the hello. And I also do an automation test with the PyUnit. And uh, I, write, I write it in the client.py in the auto test folder. And uh, here is some test scenario. I, I make it a uh, request the on, uh, only connect and close actions. And the second connect re with request get met and uh, specific URI and then check the response and then close. close. And uh, the third one, re connect request the post met and uh, request uh, specific URI and then check the response and uh, close. And I, I make it happen at, with the multiple client requests uh, con concurrently. And I check the different URI to make sure uh, different server application functions work uh, correctly. And uh, I also 
uh, use the Travis CI do the continuous integration whenever I commit a new code uh, to the GitHub, and then the Travis CI will do the automation test for my new code. Uh, not new code on for whole code. And uh, here's uh, I, I, the uh, I, the Travis CI use the Travis YAML file to link with the GitHub, and then we can uh, have some script in the Tra uh, Travis YAML file. And then this is the example that I captured uh, from the Travis CI. Um, it is the uh, running running capture, and uh, at the end it will uh, the PyUnit will tell me. Uh, it ran nine tests uh, in uh, 0.214 seconds. So I know how many times it takes. And uh, finally, I written in C version for embedded system. Not only for embedded system, it works with the uh, traditional computer, including a container like Docker. And uh, also, the main file are service so, so service sources file and the header file, and the middleware sources file and header fi header file in the library folder. And uh, the example for C version micro HTTP server code, just like the Py version. And uh, also for a server application functions example. And I have uh, uh, put the uh, APIs on the GitHub wiki, and uh, you can find it by this URL. And also uh, works good for the C version micro HTTP server. And I, I also tried uh, some specific Chinese uh, OS uh, block in uh, UTF-8 and uh, Big 5. And uh, it's wor it works correct here. And uh, here, here is the uh, software end. And let's go to the hardware. Uh, micro HTTP server on embedded system. Uh, first, uh, we have to um, we have to have a uh, OS, which should provide the process. Oh, well, not not the process. Uh, provide the socket API. Okay, the micro HTTP server needs a socket API, which provide by the OS. Uh, but put a heavy OS like Linux on the limited resource board may not be a good idea, because the resource is, is limited. So we have to choose a lightweight uh, OS like uh, real-time OS. And uh, I choose the free autos because uh, it has the uh, clear document and uh, usability. I mean a clear document, which means the document is correct and uh, easy to find. I'll say why the correct is important. Uh, free autos is free, which means free then. And uh, you can find its intro introduction from here. But pure free autos does not provide a socket a a related API. So we have to do it by ourselves. And uh, I use the uh, STN32F4 discovery board as the main board. But it does not have the uh, uh, Ethernet socket. So I find the ESP01 as a Wi Fi module. And here's the uh, wiring schema. I use the USART6 connect to the ESP01's UART, and the UA, you use the USART2 as the serial console and, and connect to the computer. And uh, this is the real wiring picture. And uh, here comes the yellow line again. The up three layers are for the application layer. And down four layers is for the hardware and the OS layers. And the ESP, ESP01 does the transport network data link and the physical layer. And I use the serial lines on the STN32F4 30, discovery board and the wiring with the ESP01 with the UART. And we, we still need the socket to UART and the serial device drivers for, the, um, for write and read the socket. So, here comes the socket API that we may use. The data types, the constant flags, and uh, some functions, initial function for like for uh, socket and bind, and uh, listen, accept, and IO for send and uh, receive, shut down, close, and uh, maybe manipulate the uh, flags, 
uh, for uh, like set sub socket option and the function control. And the select API, the file descript set and the uh, time interval structure and the select function and the macros like file descriptor, file descriptor zero set create is set. We also need ESP8266 and the serial drivers. ESP ones uh, chip is ESP8266. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, the protocol of the communication between the microcontroller and ESP01 is AT command. And here is the uh, some of the command that, that uh, I have used. I I have used. And here is the structure of my system. And the yellow blocks are we lacked, so we have to do by ourselves. The Chinese means that's DIY. And uh, I implemented the used API as much as possible, and the marking may be used if the function is not important to, re to reduce the complexity. I refer to and copy the Linux header files because I, I have to uh, have the same API for uh, different operating systems. And uh, to make it simple, merge the variety header files, which include and rewrite them into several files. And I also reference the serial drivers of Linux. And for example, the micro HTTP server uh, uses the send system call and then call the send socket function. And the ESP8266 driver uses the USART send function and then call the USART send byte function of the USART, and then it will write the data to the transfer line of the serial line. If there is any data uh, received from the serial line of the microcontroller, then it will trigger the interrupt handler of the uh, hardware. Then it will uh, uh, it will trigger the interrupt trigger the interrupt handler, and then the USART uh, read byte function will be called, and then read the byte into the receive buffer of the USART. And then the ESP8266 driver or persistent task will check, uh, will check there is any new data in the USART receive buffer. If so, then it will call get client request the function to read the data from the receive buffer into the corresponding client socket receive queue. And then the micro, uh, and then the micro HG server will use the select function to check there is any ready to be read data, uh, read the data in the uh, corresponding socket. If so, then it will call receive, fun uh, receive system call and then you uh, call the SQ receive function to read the uh, data in the corresponding client socket receive queue to the application. And the ESP8266 driver provide the initial URT, a uh, USART chan channel, and the max ESP01 is a network interface, which translates the system code into AT commands, and manage, manage socket resource like a, a file, descript file descriptor of sockets. And then provide the mutex of the USART channel, because both of the transfer and the receive task of the driver uh, of the ESP8266 driver communicate with the ESP01 through the same USART channel, uh, channel. and also provide the function to join an SS point. And then the receive task is a process task process the active request from ESP01, and the task uh, transfer task is uh, for dealing the command going to be sent to the ESP01. And it also provides the socket, uh, uh, check the socket is ready to be read or to be written functions. And then here's the flow of the receive task. It enables USART receive pipe, and then try to take the mutex. If it does not take the mutex, it will delay and block itself, and then our task will be in running mode. If it takes the mute, if it takes the mutex, then it will check the USART pipe is readable. If if there is more more to be read, then it will call get ESP eighty two six this ESP eighty two sixty six uh, request call, 
and then read more bytes. If there is no more to be read, then you will give the mutex and then you will delay itself and then other task will be in running mode. And then here's for a transfer task. It will try to take USLT mutex too. And then it takes the mutex and then it will check the command. If, it, if the command from the application is sent, then it will send the socket. And if it is closed, then it will close the socket. And then give the mutex and then suspend itself. And then our task will be run until uh, the application uh, act ask it to run, ask it to run. And then here's the select function, just like uh, other operating systems library. And the most important is the file descriptor set. File descriptor set is an, actually it's a base array. So I make it is as the data type of you in unsigned 64 uh, base integer. And uh, I also implement the select system call function. Um, it, it actually goes through each socket whose file descriptor is less than the file descriptor plus one it in, it is interested. And then it goes with the uh, check the read file descriptor set. If the read file descriptor set is not null and the cur current file descriptor is interested, which means the flag is set, then it will check the file, descri uh, file descriptor is ready to be read. If so, it will increase the count. The count will uh, is uh, represent how many file descriptor is interesting and uh, uh, ready to be read or to be written or is exception. If it is not, then, then it will clear a bit of the uh, corresponding to the file descriptor of the file descriptor set. And then also the same job for the uh, right file descriptor set and the uh, exception file descriptor set. However, the exception file descriptor set File descriptor set is not used for micro HTTP server, so I mark it up, and so it, it's a dummy function. And assemble all parts together. Uh, after power on, and the, the, the programming, uh, uh, the software will set up LEDs and the USLT2 uh, peripherals and initial uh, ESP8266 driver, and which will set up the ES, uh, USART6 and create the ESP2, ESP8266 receive task and transfer task. And then uh, create a, the micro HTTP server task and then the uh, free autos task schedule runs and uh, it will run the tasks. And then for micro HTTP server task, uh, it check the ESP8266 state. If it is linked, which means it, it connect to the uh, Wi-Fi and then get the interface IP and then add the routes and then initial a micro HTTP server and then run a micro HTTP server. And here should be a real demo here, but uh, the airline lost my luggage, so <laughs> I can only have this. Uh, this is the picture I captured before. Uh, this is the board and uh, after power on and the no light has been uh, no lights on, and uh, I connect to uh, I I use the browser connect to my board, and uh, here's the uh, serial console from the USART to uh, like this, and uh, here's the welcome page here. If I send the command at, to the uh, set uh, the red and blue LED to be light, uh, I set it to one, and then they, they be light. And here's the example. And here's a reference. And uh, thank you, and uh, any question? I actually made something similar, but I made it directly on ESP. Uh -huh. Because it's, I think it's easier just to use ESP as a microcontroller instead of using it uh, as a Wi-Fi. But the problem, the main problem I uh, came while doing is, is that um, uh, I 
decided that it would be better to make something like re-entrant web server. So, uh, because if you do another tasks on ESP, then you need a web server that doesn't uh, hang on select. Yeah. You need uh, a polling web server uh, so that you can, in some, let's say, uh, spare time, you can uh, check whether the web server will uh, handle the, the request. Yeah. So that, that's why I started it a bit from a different way. Yeah. Okay, I started because of uh, I want uh, because I want to control some uh, machines, for example, the vehicles, and uh, ESP01 uh, can maybe a uh, few PWN channels, and uh, other microcontroller may have six or eight or even more. Yeah. Actually, ESP has I think six PPIOs, one PWM, ADC, so. Um, it's enough to control a robot at this. Um, Only this. Uh, yeah. Uh, for some condition, it, uh, for some condition it could be. But I mean it's, uh, for example, uh, a motor, an AC motor, uh, uh, three-phase AC motor, then it will uh, maybe use three P PWN channels at the same time because it is three-phase. Yeah. And uh, if I want to make a uh, three axis, then it will multiple by three, so it will be nine. So uh, there, uh, this is the first uh, uh, why I want to uh, write this. And uh, the second is, uh, oh, this one. I mean, I need the correct document, correct document. Oh, here. Um, I have read the document of the ESP01, and it, tell me, uh, it tells me the AT plus CWJAP and the uh, colon, and then some string after that, and then ends with a um, carriage return, and the line feed yeah. is a command. However, the correct command is AT command plus CWJAP colon, some stream and the uh, line feed, uh, carriage return and line feed and a line feed. Yeah. Yeah. So I need the correct document. So uh, here, so, so that's why I not use the ESP01 as the main microcontroller and just for the Wi Fi module. Okay, and what is, uh, let's say, the completeness of, of your solution? Do you support just some uh, basic things, or do you support uh, support different uh, content encodings, uh, different, uh, let's say, uh, compressions, um, uh, chunk modes, and stuff like that, or it's is it just uh, request response in uh, HTML? Um. Actually, it's an HTTP server, and the uh, uh, here. Uh, the here. Page up. Oh, here. Um, the server socket and the middleware are the responsible for the HTTP server, and the backend is for the application, and the application could be the uh, three models, CGI, FSGI, or NSAP alike. Um, so I split here, I split uh, here. I mean, this for HTTP server and this is for the real application users want. Yeah, and uh, the users may be for, uh, want the uh, um, command for control the motor uh, turn right or turn left or speed up, speed down. And uh, it, it could be uh, just uh, no, response, respon no response message body, but for uh, response, uh, uh, response line for uh, status call, and uh, 200 is uh, success, right? And uh, maybe 
Uh, yeah, but, but I mean uh, the HTTP uh, 1.1 uh, specification. How uh, much of it is already in, in your solution? Oh, good because question. Because the, the problem for me was managing all the uh, cases. Like, uh, okay, uh, chunk encoding, uh, post uh, responses, uh, and stuff like that, making just, uh, I already have a code for this simple, let's say, text uh, exchange, but then when you go into the uh, HTTP 1.1 specification, then there's a lot of branching and branching and branching, and then you get to um, thousands of lines of code just to handle, for example, a correct post response and, and stuff like that. Then if you want add things to add things like web sockets, uh -huh. then <laughs> oh, it will be a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you need to upgrade the connection. Yeah. Yeah, and you need to handle that. And uh, what I was thinking is just CGI is great, yes, but if you do not have support for the uh, HTTP uh, protocol, the, the whole thing of it, then. Uh, sending posts, uh, the browser can send you anything. Like, yeah. uh, it will send you a post that is zipped uh, in chunk encoding, and then what? So my question is how... Uh, so actually you can reject that. Yeah, you can <laughs> reject that, but you cannot reject everything. Yeah, but plain. So uh, what, what's the scope of HTTP? Uh, I have to say yes, it's part of, part of, not all of, um, which means uh, general condition it could be used, but for a specific condition like or socket, it will fail. Uh, actually, uh, uh, just the easy request and response will be correct for now, and it could be better. Yeah. For example, I, I also want it to uh, work with the HTTPS, something like that, and uh, it's in progress and not commit yet. Yeah. Did you consider to use the lib micro HTTP lib? Uh, lightweight to HTTP. It's a, a library called lib micro HTTP D. Did you consider to use that? It's a, a project. Uh, that is, I believe, from Free Software Foundation. Uh. Used it by System D Gateway D to show the journal, and we are using that in our Solita project. It's kind of yeah, this, this one. Last one. Yeah. yeah. Is uh. it possible to use it or to change it? Uh, I have considered it, but uh, when I finish it, I find it. I find I find it finally when. I, after I finished the microHTTP, yeah, and, uh, and 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 it's it's bigger than microHTTP, so it has it, it needs more space for the uh, store uh, for the flash, yeah, for the storage. Yes, but uh, maybe we can trying to reduce its size um, because it does all that we were saying plus more, like it does TLS and things like that. Yeah. I have, I, I want to try this, but because uh, this is my uh, study after my job. So this is not my main job, but I, I'm a MS in my in the day, daytime. And uh, I write this program after, uh, when I, uh, after work at home. Yeah, so uh, I want to try the library micro HTTP because it's the newest project and it's uh, uh, more, Compl more completely, yeah. I have to think how to try it, but not yet. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Uh, uh, 115.2 kilo dots. And, and, and there's, uh, this is the bottleneck of the speed here. Uh, 
ESPO one's uh, control is fast, and uh, PC faster, and uh, it is Cortex M4 for uh, STN32 F4, and it it is faster too. However, this is only uh, 11, uh, 115 115.2 kilobytes. So this is the bottleneck here. And actually, I won't use the peripheral of the uh, STN32 F4, the physical layer, but it has no Ethernet so uh, socket or uh, Wi-Fi connect directly to the dev development board. So I use the ESP01. Okay, no question. And then thank you everybody.